Hi everyone, the Artiste with Ivy Reese is back in our second season and today our special guest is Mary Ellen Corsil. She is the owner of her own public relations business, MEK Specialty Services, which focuses on working with authors, helping them to generate publicity for book signings and other needed materials. Mary Ellen is also the chair and coordinator of probably one of the longest standing writing groups, the Courtney Park Writers Group in Mississauga. She's a poet and short story writer. Her work has appeared in anthologies and she's contributed to, contributed to the Mississauga Community Magazine, Neighbors of Lorne Park. Today we will be talking about the written expression and why community hubs for writers are so important, especially in the light of uh, Ford Cuts to Libraries and what makes the Courtney Writers Group so special. Mary Ellen, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. So originally you hailed from Moose Jaw. That's right. But you've been here for about 40 years, but you actually yes. got your start in radio and television in Saskatchewan before working for advertising agencies that's in right, Toronto. That's right, and I worked in Calgary too mm -hmm. for a while. And so that's obviously helped with MEK special, specialty services um, with the book signings and everything that you arrange. Well, it, it certainly seemed to have. Yeah. Well, now even though um, you've been in Ontario for over 40 years, you, the, and com you are in touch with Moose Jaw a lot and the community does inspire you. I love Moose Jaw. Yeah. And, and, and you've kind of injected a lot of this inspiration and positivity into the Courtney Park Writers Group, which is one of, the, it's been around for about 13, 14 years, is that right? A long time, well, yeah, yeah. Well, t tell us a little bit about them. Well, the, the Courtney Park Group is, is just an amazing group of authors and we've got artists as well. And we've been together a long time and it's just such a comfortable situation and we really keep each other writing. I think that's the key we mentor each other. And we have a lot of fun as well. Yes. You know? Well, that's actually where I met you back in, I think around 2011. That's right, a long time ago, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I would like to talk to some of the authors about, um, cause, uh, so, and the viewers, because a lot of authors do need writing groups. It's a great place where people can share their work. But I have found that sometimes in these writing groups, uh, people are critiquing uh, each other rather than building a positive environment and then sometimes uh, when someone's a budding writer that makes it more difficult. However with the Courtney Park writers uh, you've had some huge names uh, and many many authors and who have over the 10 plus years gone from you know just starting out to actually having numerous books published which we'll be talking showing the viewers in a few moments and uh, that's really a huge secret to success. Well, I, I'm just so happy for the authors because a lot of them started off, they were writing short stories or poetry and then you hear the next meeting, well, I'm starting my novel and a lot of them have been published, a couple of them have been published two or three times and uh, it's just such an accomplishment and, and, and I remember when they started and I just feel so good when you see that happen and it happens often in our group and it, it's such a, a delight to see. And, and they're so happy, all of a sudden, you know, their career is taking off as a writer. Well, having seen your work in print is one of the best feelings. But before we get to that, I mean, we want to do a special shout out because I know you didn't start the group. Um, no, Cheryl Antio yeah. Xavier, who runs Inner Words uh, Publishing out of Mississauga, which is a self-publishing press, but has been around a long time. Uh, this is one of their books, for example. Uh, she's published probably over 50 books in the last 10 years. And she started the group. Tell us a little bit about how it's transitioned to you being the chair and coordinator. Well, I think Cheryl laid the groundwork and, I, and I'm really, really thankful for all that she did because when she started off, she organized a lot of events and she had authors reading at events and she just kind of brought them along. And we started out very small and I started helping her. But uh, it, it just kind of grew and it was, it was just wonderful to see. And I think she could see it as well. And she was tireless in, in arranging different events. Like some of them were really huge and a lot of work. And she made sure that all the authors in the Courtney Park group were uh, participating. And I, I think uh, that's to her credit. And we're so thankful, you know, that yeah, she started Yeah, she helped it. facilitate um, publishing yeah. them in quality books. I mean, she did. And here's another of her books. 
The Literary Connection. Yes. And this is an anthology as well. And uh, Cheryl did produce this book, and quite a few of the writers from uh, Courtney Park um, Writers are Group there. are in here. I'm in here, and uh, many Amina, others. Uh, Amina Montano, uh, a lot of people do know her. Uh, Meredith Cox, probably, right. as well. That's right. She's been a member of our group, but we haven't seen her lately, but she certainly is a member. Mary. Well, um, yeah, this was from 2013, and I know a lot of um, people in the artists, um, actually authors I work with and have had on the show, I met at your group. This was the first Courtney Park connection, and as you can see, the layout is beautiful. Pratap Reddy, who's um, in uh, the list of people in the book, is incredible. Um, I myself was published in here. Okay, you're. However, we had P P Pratap Reddy, which many people in Toronto see know. He recently had a book come out with Gurnick, I believe. That's right. Now, here's his latest book, and it's Rama's Treasure. Yes. And he's just nicely back from a book tour out west and he was in Vancouver, Calgary and Winnipeg and it was very successful and he was just so happy that his publisher Guernica had sent him on this tour. I, I think it's just a wonderful experience for any author. Yeah, we're and actually, this I saw this, book. I saw it at um, Indigo Chapters in uh, Oakville. Uh, it's in the local author section right by the Artiste magazine. Uh, I saw it just about a month ago. Well, that's, that's the it's, second it's on, book. right on display, oh. yeah. Oh, that's good, so they've mm -hmm. got a separate table. Oh, yeah. That's good to know. But uh, I'd like to name some other ones. Peter Gay Nash, uh, Brandon Pitts, he was also the editor of this, which many people know, we, we talk about Trumpisms and the politics of poetry. Um, Kumkum Kum Ramchandani, I hope I pronounced it right. Uh, Lindsay W. Albert, Tasneem, uh, Jivali, uh, Mary, Mary Ellen, you're in here, of course. John Ambury, and uh, Zora Zobari, Trevor Trower, Kim Kaye. Let's talk about a few of these authors. I know you wanted to, like, what is special, what strikes me about your group is how diverse it is. I mean, you've got people from Georgetown all the way to Mississauga, and uh, we're going to get down to the library aspect soon, but. First, I mean, the dynamics of the group are incredible. I mean, so... Well, thank you. you yeah. I know you wanted to talk about, um, well, Trevor, for example. Uh, Trevor is the glue that holds our whole um, writing group together. And he, we celebrated his 90th birthday. That was two years ago. Mm. And Kim Kayer, who is one of our authors, this is Kim's book. Yes. And... Uh, she one is of her three books. one of her three books. Yeah, she's a prolific author, but she's also an actor. And she had her Marilyn Monroe outfit on, and she sang "Happy Birthday" like the JFK to Marilyn Monroe. And it, Trevor was just delighted. Like it was just a special, special evening. And I think Trevor, to me, is the person that kind of keeps our group together. Well, the cool thing about him is that um, he hails from Wales. He's Welsh. And, yeah, um, yeah. And a lot of people know this, but, uh, you know, he's a rhyming poet, but he also does a lot of satire, especially with the royal family. Oh, he has spoofs and also Canadian politicians, like hilarious uh, poetry. And he's a master at rhyming and rhythm, too. Yes. He's, and he writes short stories, too, about growing up in, in Wales. And, and he's just a joy to have around. We're just so happy to have him in our group. I and don't he's know. He's been around for years. I don't know if you know, but uh, one of the Brandon's, Brandon Pitts' favorite stories, who um, now he lives in Montreal, but uh, is when he, he used to be part of the Courtney Park writers, and he's actually a best-selling poet now uh, through Mosaic Press. And uh, he's also a playwright. I mean, Brandon's incredible, but he would ride, he rode down to the Lick Cafe in the early days, um, around the time he was a member of Courtney Park, because he heard about a notorious rhyming poet, and it was Trevor Trower. Oh, and that was because he's actually had been banned from some <laughs> events in Toronto where oh, they said Oh, because I know they said go. no, no rhyming. I remember I write yes. rhyming poetry too, and we were both dismayed. And yeah, that that was quite a moment for Trevor when that happened. But anyway, he's undaunted. <laughs> no, uh, no, he, he he. I don't think he will ever be daunted, and no, he is looking no, to no. publish. He's written That's some right. memoirs, but he's looking to publish. That's right. Something he's looking officially. for publish. He wants a collection. Yeah. You know, uh, and of your short stories like and his poetry. Yes, we're doing our best to kind of, you know, get and them published. I should mention people can find his work in the Artiste with most of these authors um, or online. Uh, Zora Zobari, this is uh, one of her plays. Uh, it sold out to um, over 100,000 people uh, actually saw it the second time it ran in uh, Mississauga. Uh, the stats, I can't remember right now off the top of my head, but they are um, published and uh, questionably questionably ever after. Now, she is also the founder of Bridging the Gap uh, 
Bridging the Gap, which is her company, and she writes, she's currently writing her memoir, but she's also a poet so as well. She's a, well, I saw her play, and it was really good, mm -hmm. and that was at the Living Arts Center in Mississauga. Yeah, but mm -hmm. she did one in the park as well, and it had over 120,000 people over two days. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize she yeah. had that. Uh, yeah, we did an excerpt of it in number two, and I know you wanted to do a shout out to Mina Chopra. Yes, uh, she's a wonderful artist, and uh, also, you know, she writes beautiful poetry, and, and she's from India originally. That's the beauty of our group, I think. Yes. It is, is so dynamic as far as, you know, diversity. Yes, absolutely. I'm Zora's from Pakistan, if That's I recall. That's right, yeah. Conrad Brink, this is his second book. Again, when he came, he's from Germany. When That's he right. came he's to from the Berlin. group, yeah, uh, yeah. Travelations, when he came to Courtney Park Writers, he had not published anything yet. That's right, and he's got two books now uh, that are... Uh, yeah, two town. books, and this is with Tamarin Tree Books uh, out of Toronto. And then Sheila Tucker, uh, her memoir, Ragdolls and Rage, also just launched. And what is really cool about this book is that she's donating all of the proceeds to Savis, uh, which is the sexual assault and violence um, survivors in Halton. And all the proceeds of her sales do go to that. And you can find more information out about Sheila Tucker on the RT's website. You can contact her on Facebook. And also her husband, David, who is an accomplished writer as well, and, and he has a book out. And he's a member of our group as well. Yeah, one way yeah. ticket uh, That's with, right. um, I think, with Bookland Press. Won, That's right. One that uh, best his publisher. Of, best, oh, no. best, best author or something in 2014 with the Oakville Arts Council. So, yeah, and I guess, well, if we're going to do that, I'll have to show people oh, Brandon's yes. books. Yes. He writes marvelous poetry. And a lot of it he does from memory, mm -hmm. like, uh, and which is so difficult. You know, he, he just uh, does a wonderful job when he's, he reads. He's a great presenter. Well, um, so... This is really awesome. I mean, I know that at the time, in about 2012 or so, when I found your group, I'd been to a couple other writing groups and I was off, put off a little bit. But with you guys, I've stayed in touch for almost 10 years. Well, I'm so glad you have. And um, I mean, obviously a lot of people have. And now there's a dynamic here that's interesting. So Courtney Park is named after the library. That's right. In Mississauga. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, you were there, based out of there, for probably close to 10 years? I think o most Over of the, 10 years. The, yeah, so yeah, the whole yeah. life of the group. Has the been name a, is Homage. That's right. That's right. That's why we chose the name, because that's where we met. You know, and you then know. something happened. Uh, last year, you were asked to leave. Well, that was it. I, I had to go through a whole list and check off different criteria. Mm -hmm. And our group didn't seem to fit any of the criteria. And I was kind of puzzled by this. And they just kind of said to me, sorry, you can't meet anymore in our group. And we used to meet in the program room, and they offered it to us free of charge, which was great. I mean, we really appreciate it over the years. And uh, they just said, sorry, we can't anymore. And I believe it's due to budget cuts. I mean, yes. that seems to be the norm now, which is a real shame. You know, we were really disappointed, and now we meet at our members' homes. But it, it's worked. Everybody's stepped up to the plate, and they host a meeting. And, but it is a little difficult in the winter, we're finding, now that we're yeah, not Yeah, because you always did do, um, you mm -hmm. did meet at members' homes in the summer, which That's is right. really and nice. That's right, and so we it, only needed a few months in the library. Months. Yeah, six months. Six in the library, and then we had uh, six months that we met at our members' homes. And your members are so dedicated that there was even a vote, I remember. That's I was right. In, in yeah, June, yeah, July, yeah. Uh, to change the name, and uh, you chose to keep that's it. That's right. We're keeping the Courtney Park, you know, that name, because that's how we started, and we feel comfortable, you know, continuing with the name. But unfortunately, uh, it, it's not good, you know, as far as libraries are concerned. Uh, yeah. Well, this morning I did look up, um, I looked into it a little bit, because I know a lot, many of us have heard about the Ford budget cuts um, to the libraries. And I just wanted to read a couple of quotes uh, to, or reference two articles. Uh, one from the Toronto Star by uh, Kristen Rushevy and uh, from the Queen's Park Bureau, uh, April 18, 2019. But uh, basically she was interviewing, she was looking at libraries in the Windsor area in okay. southern Ontario okay. as well and they're facing 50 percent budget cuts. 50 percent? From the province. Oh. And uh, and these would not need would need to be absorbed into the current 2019 2020 fiscal year, so that was quite staggering. I found that's a sad state of affairs because libraries that's are, actually what they said they, right here. They are the hub of like you see 
high school students, they're using their library system, they're using the computers, and I think there's a lot of different events that they host, and, uh, and they really used to help promote authors. And, but I think now everything seems to come down to the bottom line budget. Well, obviously libraries yeah, are going to yeah. have to try to mm -hmm. uh, make up for these funding cuts because what I've read also uh, this morning is a lot of the cuts are offend, uh, affecting training of staff and there's a lot of uh, cuts to how much staff can be available to work. And even to the, That's I've heard that the books. That's reflected most strongly right the now. The number of books they're able to purchase now too, mm -hmm. I think. Of be, course. You know, and, at um, risk. I'd like to make a quote here from Kitty Pope, who is CEO of the Windsor Public Library from the uh, Toronto Star article. Um, and she says that uh, this issue for losing this service would be at this point, someone in Windsor could borrow a book from any library in, in, in Ontario and that would stop, said Pope. It's a huge issue. Mm. So that's the impact. I mean, the fact that anyone in Ontario could borrow a book and that could stop. And that's the 50% budget cuts can affect that. But you were interestingly telling me that even though the room is now up for rent that you used to use, it was the it's, program it's room. And it, it's empty. a large room, but there are cases when they do rent it, and I think that's what they're going to be doing down the road. That that was, I think, the the idea behind us telling us that we could no longer meet. Well, that. they said that, um, if I recall correctly, you mentioned. Uh, they said that you no longer meet the criteria. That's right, and there was although, a whole list of things. And we haven't changed in our mandate as far as our group is concerned, but unfortunately everything is kind of slanted to uh, budgetary <laughs> issues, I think. I think that's what's happening. Yeah, the mandate of your group mm -hmm. hasn't changed. No, but that's no, what we haven't. No, no, no. But yeah. that seems to be the norm now. And I know a lot of libraries, I'm from Mississauga, and they're closed in the evening. The Streetsville Library yes, is closed. Yes. They used to be open Friday nights, and we thought, well, we might be able to meet there. I checked. They said, no, sorry, we're no longer open. So they've had to, you know, close and do things probably that are uncomfortable to do, but I guess well, budget-wise they have to do well, it. Well, that's another reason why there's such important community hubs, because especially with children, you know, 7, 6 p.m. on a Friday, kids can go to the library, even if they're playing video mm -hmm. games, they're mm -hmm. in a safe place, they're around adults, they're having fun, they're not having to be outside. That's right. Yeah. Uh, it's extremely important. I just want to make one I'd like to say one, uh, one thing here from the CBC article. Um, and also, uh, no, sorry, this is from Toronto's article. But the funding decision was part of an overall decrease for the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport, which took an almost $60 million hit down mm. to $1.49 billion. And uh, this is the, the uh, library, uh, the Southern Ontario Library Service says that this is definitely a turn for the worse. It is, really. Yeah. I, I think all the people that use the library, uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely a step backwards. It really is. Yes. And, uh, and I'd just like to make a correction. The previous things I quoted uh, with uh, Kathy Pope, Kitty Pope from the CEO, that was from the CBC article. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is... It is worth looking into uh, library hubs or need, but you would like to get so. So, what is the way forward? You want people to you want people to join the group, but I know yes, you also would like to get back into a library. Well, if we, we can, we know the or, importance of, or them. perhaps a community center. Mm -hmm. You know, if if there are any space, if any space is available, we'd certainly be be happy. You know, to to check into it. Okay. You know? And so you meet on the last Friday of every That's month right. from right. 6 to 8.30 6 p.m. 6 to 8.30, yeah. And we don't have a meeting in December. That's the only month that we don't meet. But it's, it's, it's great. And I look forward to our meetings so much. And everybody, it's just such a comfortable situation. And it is. Usually there's yeah. snacks. That's right. We all, you know, we have, it's kind of potluck. And there's poetry, prose, um, plays. We, like people read right. everything. That's right. We've had someone who used to come out now and again, and he wrote lyrics, and that was interesting. And we've had a few playwrights, too, have come out, like Zora. Mm -hmm. But I, I think the short stories seem to be the norm. Novels and short stories are, yeah. and a lot of poetry, too. Well, I know you wanted to mention just a couple more members yes, before we wrap up. Yes, I do. We have Marlene Layton. She's from the Maritimes, and she's also an author, and uh, she writes great poetry. Mm -hmm. And Brian Turner from London, England. Yes, one of course. He's in the yeah, artist. Yeah, him and Sheila are both featured in the fourth issue. And, and he's just a marvelous, uh, he's a, a writer, he's an artist, and he also does wood carving. And once a year we meet, have our meeting, in the wood carving shop. And you can smell the wood and you can see all the carvings and it's really a neat place. 
know, to have a meeting. And, and he is a cancer survivor and an amazing yes. guy. Yeah, like, you know him. And he will be also on um, both. I would like okay. to say Sheila and uh, Brian will be at the uh, Arty Sother signing event this Sunday right. at Indigo That'll Spirit in Oakville event, yeah. from 1 to 4 p.m. So people can even, and yeah. You were hoping to drop in, but we'll see, no, right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I wish you luck with the event. I think it's going to go well. But I have a few other people, a few other, like Kim Kayer. Yes. Uh, she is amazing. As I mentioned to her mm -hmm. earlier about her Marilyn Monroe, and she has quite a few books out. And uh, I, th I think everybody looks to her as soon as she starts reading, like everybody perks up because you, you don't know what subject she's going to cover. And it's just amazing. You know, you know Kim is our... our, our uh, our mainstay. She's the star, I would say. Of, oh, of definitely. Book. Let me see. And uh, Tasnim is from Africa. Yes. And Elaine McShane, she is our newest member, as well as Bala Menup. And he is a publisher, and he also is the editor of the uh, Weekly Voice, which is a South Asian uh, newspaper. Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, so he's been a member for quite a while. And Doris Grant, she's one of my favorite people, and she writes her historical information, and she's compiling everything for a memoir and uh, she is so a stickler for detail like she does for the early 1900s she does a lot of research but we really enjoy her stories and Gita Krishnamu she is uh, from day one I think Cheryl knew her well mm -hmm. and so she's been a member of our group and John Ambury and we mentioned about Conrad. Conrad's yes. stories are, are, are amazing. And Ken Marvel yeah. I know from rural yep. Quebec He's um, actually pitching his book right now. He That's writes, right. He um, writes yeah. episodical type short stories. Oh, and they're, and they're just amazing. And, and he has such a wonderful sense of humor. Like Ken is, you know, uh, we love his stories from the 50s. We can all relate to that. And, and Anna Yin, of course, yeah. who was Mrs. Saga's first poet That's laureate. right. She was it. And she also uh, does a number of workshops that she facilitates. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dave Taylor, too, he used to come out. Oh, yes. He comes out now and again. And I know he's in your... Uh, Oh, yeah, he's a strong supporter of Your the, issue. Yeah, of, yeah. of all the 905 arts. I mean, he would come to Lick Cafe, Corny Park Writers. He goes to Georgetown Writers. He's, he's on the He kind of makes the circuit, yes. you know. But I think it's just so good that you have started the artists because they're really in the 905 area and the over 45 plus. I think there hasn't been a lot happening in, in that area. So I'm, I'm so glad that you've kind of taken the reins and, you know, uh, produced your magazines because I, I think it's a great... Uh, a great place to showcase authors and artists. Yeah, and definitely. Well, we, we do have both emerging and established, and I think it's, especially with um, the se with seniors, um, I've heard from the Ontario Arts Council, they were telling me some time ago, about a year ago, that um, it's quite difficult for um, anyone over the age of 45, 50, uh, if they're writing their first book, to get published. It is because they if they're before, young and they're yeah, emerging, yeah, it's that's a totally right. different. That's platform. right. It is. It is, and it's it is a bigger challenge. It's a challenge to get published anyway. But I think when you're over forty five, it seems to be a larger challenge. So uh, it's so you know good that you have uh, started your artist publications. Thank you. Yeah. But the bottom line is is that uh, your group is amazing. People should Thank come you. out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've helped a lot of authors get published, do book tours. Uh, you're on Ryerson Radio frequently. You're you're all over the place. Well, thank you. Yeah, you, you have to get out there. And yes. <laughs> and so, what should people do to get in touch with you? Should they just send you an email? Find or I know we can put the email, Mary Ellen's okay. email, up on the screen. Okay. Well, and that's probably the best way to reach me. Uh, M E K M at Rogers dot com, and I'll certainly reply. And we are looking for new members. You know, it's the forty five plus demographic. And uh, and there's no membership. No, for there isn't. Anything. There isn't any. You come out, you, just you read, come you and you your read, stuff and have fun, and, and, you, know, and that, you don't even have to idea. make it for every meeting or anything. No, and even if you aren't intent on, you're just thinking about uh, getting into the writing field. That's mm -hmm. fine. You can come, and we're always looking for audience members too. So uh, you know, anyone's welcome. To okay. Come out. Yeah. That's great, and you'll have a chance to meet a lot of authors there, including myself. At That's times. right. We're so glad that you're yeah, there. You're always there. <laughs> Mary Ellen, thank you so much for joining us. It was fabulous to have you on the show. Well, thank you. I am so happy to be here. And on behalf of our writers group, I'm sure many of them are watching. I mean, you've helped them get recognized. Yes. Well, everyone, please email uh, Mary Ellen, M-E-K-M at Rogers.com. Yes, the info's on the screen. And uh, 
any questions, she'll be happy to talk to you. And MEK Specialty Services can also be found on Facebook if you just check it out. And once again, Mary Ellen Corsill, thank you so much for tuning in. We will be back in a few minutes. Thank you. This was the Artiste with Ivy Reese. Thanks for that.